2022 is done and through. 2023, I'm bad with rhymes. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Here we are in day three of my 2022 year-end spectacular-ish, and I thought I would bring you guys a list this year that I have never done for my Spectacular-ish before. Uh, it's a bit of a different list, and it is my top 10 favorite purchases of 2022. Now, this is, of course, not counting the new release albums, which, of course, I will be covering in my Albums of the Year list, uh, or the um, odds and ends. It's Basically, it's nothing that uh, was put out in 2022. I've actually got a couple of uh, small lists. Well, they're actually just two-item things that I'll be doing tomorrow, so they're not really even lists per se, but anyway. That stuff is all 2022 also. But uh, yeah, this is just stuff that I picked up uh, through various means over the course of 2022 that I most enjoyed. Uh, just, you know, in terms of, you know, m being money well spent, best, best bang for their, for their buck, or just the ones I enjoyed the most. So yes, I have uh, 10 CDs, well, 10 items on my list and two honorable mentions. A couple of the items are uh, actually more than one disc. So uh, one, of, one of which you actually saw in the thumbnail for this video. Uh, it's actually a five CD set. And uh, the other item, uh, that, that one's further in my countdown, the other item uh, that is two discs is one of my honorable mentions. So I will go ahead and start off with that one first. Uh, these I picked up just in November. Uh, so just a couple of months ago. One of them I found at uh, one of the local St. Vinny's thrift stores, and I was kind of uh, flabbergasted that I found it because I, I didn't know it existed, and it was from one of my favorite uh, groups of the, 90, the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, so, and it was Volume 2 that I found, so I had to go around and hunt for Volume 1. But yes, it is a two-disc set of... Uh, the host or narrator of the discs uh, basically referred to it as a CD magazine. And so it's basically the, from the Five official fan club. Five was one of my favorite boy bands from uh, the past years. And yeah, Five Live Volume 1 and Volume 2. Uh, volume 2 is the one, as, as I said, that I picked up at the thrift store. And so I went and hunted down the Volume 1 on Discogs. And uh, yeah, this one only cost me a dollar, and this one only cost me five dollars. So uh, for being something that uh, I would assume is pretty darn rare and that I didn't know existed, uh, I consider it well worth the purchase. There was no music, no unreleased music or anything on these discs. It was just... Uh, interviews with the guys and, uh, you know, behind the scenes of their tour. Uh, one of them one of them was done, Volume 1 was done before they went on their tour, and Volume 2 was done during and shortly after their tour. So still lots of fun. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, a bunch of interviews with the guys and stuff. So yeah, cool, cool stuff to have. And now the other honorable mention uh, is going to be from a genre that uh, you will see a few times on this list, and that is soundtracks. Uh, yes, as I mentioned in my intro video, I kind of got more into purchasing soundtracks uh, in 2022 than I had in the previous few years uh, combined, really. And this is one that I found back in August on Discogs. And from a favorite movie of mine from my youth, it is Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Uh, this is the score from the Disney film. Uh, music was composed by the late James Horner. Uh, loved the movie when I was young. I saw it a bunch of times. And of course, it was a science fiction-based movie, so... I, I had to have loved it, uh, and that's one of the uh, subgenres of, of science fiction is the uh, the idea of miniaturization or enlargement. Uh, you know, where where size is size is now relative and is no longer absolute. Just kind of this the concept kind of intrigues me. But anyway, uh, fun fun music. Uh, the score was never released on uh, any uh, medium until two thousand nine. Yeah, two thousand nine. So the twentieth anniversary of the movie. And uh, this one normally goes for well over $150. It's out of print, but I found it on Discogs for $58. It was still sealed. So, a, you know, not only was I kind of hoping to have the CD, I wasn't planning on buying it, but uh, when, when it comes along for way less than half the price that it's going for, I'm going to pick it up. So, and it was amazing that I found it for that inexpensive. So, yes, definitely one of my favorite purchases of the year. Um... <clears throat> Number 10 and number 9 are, all, are actually also soundtracks. Uh, number 10 is... And they're, they're actually both John Williams soundtracks. Number 10 is War Horse, the score from the Spielberg film that he composed back in 20, 
2011. Oh, it's longer ago than I thought it was. But yes, I'd had this one on my want list for quite a while. I didn't really pay a huge amount for it. I only paid 10 bucks for it, but it was at, at the FYE store when I went up to FYE in Salem in July. Found this one uh, sitting right there on the racks and a couple of little teeny tiny blemishes on it. So it was well worth the $10 uh, I got. Yes, so yeah. And great music. The music is not quite as stirring and memorable as I thought it was, but I, I kind of had to have the CD. If you haven't seen the movie yet, uh, I recommend it. It's a little bit uh, harrowing and heart-wrenching in places, but it's very, very heartwarming as well. So uh, yeah, check out the movie if you haven't yet, and the soundtrack is great as well. Okay. It's John Williams. And number nine, as I mentioned, is also a John Williams score. It is the 40th anniversary issue of the score from E.T. Now, I had only had the uh, an expanded CD uh, soundtrack CD version from 1996 before this one, and they had actually put out the same track listing for the a 30th uh, 35th anniversary edition. But I never got around to buying that, and it was out of print, and it was getting really expensive. So I started cursing myself, and then like a month later, uh, this was uh, in August, uh, the label La La Land put together a or basically put out a reissue, slightly modified cover art, but the same content uh, for the 40th anniversary of the movie. Uh, yeah, Discs 1 and the first part of Disc 2, or excuse me, the second part of Disc 2 <coughs> have the movie score, and the first, par first part of Disc 2, eh, the first part of Disc 2 is basically just a remastered version of the original album edits. So, and there's so something to be said. A lot of people love soundtracks. Uh, they're, they're purists. They want them in the form that they were heard in the movie, but I think there's something to be said about the original album edits of soundtracks. They're edits that uh, you don't hear anywhere else, you only hear on album, and so that kind of makes them unique. And But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm going off track here, but yes, E.T., one of my favorite movies of all time, and one of my favorite John Williams scores of all time. Uh, I, I paid, you know, was it $35 for it, you know, so it was list price because it was a new CD, but well worth having all of that extra material on there. So yes, a fantastic buy. Number eight, uh, I picked up, uh, actually, I, I special ordered this from the House of Records, so I paid uh, close to $50 for it. But, I, you know, over the course of the year, I get my money's worth when I buy music, so the occasional splurge is just fine with me. So yeah, I had to special order this because it is a Japanese import. It is Pentatonix Volumes 1 and 2, the Japanese edition, as you can see here. So yes, it is um, the content of their first two EPs, along with some bonus tracks on it. And here you can see the, uh, this is actually a full, you know, full width uh, OB strip. You know, the, the OBs are usually just strips that go around the ends of the CD, but that one was a full length uh, OB. So yes, lots of fun. Um, I've been enjoying uh, appreciating Pentatonix more and more uh, over the last couple of years. So yeah, so I was very happy to add this, even though I did not get it for a bargain. What can you do? <coughs> Excuse me. Number seven on my list is uh, the other St. Vinny's buy that I have in this list. So, yeah. So one of the best dollars that I ever spent uh, over the, the whole last year for 2022. And this, this is an album by a group called Dap Theory. And they are basically a an avant-garde jazz group. Um, they do vocals and they do instrumentals. Uh, some of the, they, they have some hip-hop elements. Some of the stuff is... Uh, some of the lyrics are delivered in a rap style, and some of them are just sung. But uh, yeah, the album is called Y'all Just Don't Know. And kind of, it's kind of a message that, you know, y'all just don't know what you're in for when you pick up this album. So it's, it's kind of hard to describe their music, but it's just fantastic. And when I listened to the CD, I, I just picked it up, you know, on a whim, just not knowing what it was about. And uh, But when I listened to it, I realized that uh, Trickle Down, the first track... I had heard before, and I had heard it on a, a compilation CD from a magazine called Paste. This was back 20-some years ago. There was a, a magazine about books, music, and movies. It was called Paste, and every magazine came with a CD uh, containing tracks from the albums that they reviewed in their album review section. And, of course, this was well before um, streaming music and before MP MP3 downloads were really practical. This was when a lot of people still had a dial-up internet connection. But uh, yeah, these guys were on, uh, and the song Trickle Down was on one of the CDs. So uh, yeah, and that was, it was excellent hearing that one. A great message in that song that uh, uh, about uh, 
socio socio political maybe it's about the economy of the world and of the United States in particular. And uh, there's another song on here, Bad Air. Listen if you can find Bad Air by Dap Theory online, listen to that. I just I just love that song. It's something about that song I totally love. So and that's probably one of my favorite songs that I've heard in all of 2022 from any manner of album that I purchased. So yes, excellent group, Dap Theory. I need to check and see if they put out any other albums. I actually am not sure, but uh, yes, fantastic stuff. And um, oh, I picked this up in August at a St. Vinny's. I know I said that, but I can't remember. I said what month I picked it up. And then here we have another soundtrack. Uh, this is, uh, we're down to number six on my list of favorite purchases. This one I picked up, or I bought in July off of Amazon. And it is the soundtrack from Inner Space by Jerry Goldsmith. Uh, f for as long as, you know, ever since the movie came out, I've had the original soundtrack, which was uh, the first half was the score and the second half was songs from the movie, you know, or, or it might have been, you know, the other way around. But that was kind of a trend for soundtracks in the 80s. Uh, they did, you know, half score and half <coughs> songs. But uh, yeah, the, the full score from this movie had never been released until this one came out in 2009 also, kind of like the uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Uh, but this one is actually on the La La Land Records label. So, and yes, this is, again, kind of like the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. This is one that goes for uh, over $75 online. Not as expensive as Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but still. And I picked this up for $35, new and sealed. So yes, I, I somehow, somehow I found some great sleeper lots on eBay and Amazon and Discogs uh, over the course of the year. And I'm very, very grateful to have uh, found those, uh, those finds. I found finds. <laughs> I talk good American. Anyway, number <clears throat> a drink before I go to number five on my list, which actually happens to be five CDs. And so this is the one you saw me uh, holding over my head in my thumbnail picture. Uh, so yes, for many years I'd had on my mental wish list a well-rounded compilation of rock instrumentals. Uh, I looked when I remembered to look and never really found anything that, that really grabbed me. And then I found this full set. Uh, it's it's a set of five CDs, and House of Records had all five of them. I uh, picked these up back in October. And it's from Rhino Records. And these were three bucks a piece. So I paid the $15 for the whole shebang. And yes, Rhino makes the greatest, the best compilations ever. It is uh, rock instrumental classics. So we've got volume one, the 50s, volume two, the 60s. Volume 3, the 70s. Volume 4 is Soul. And Volume 5 is Surf. So yes, some fantastic stuff. I mean, just about anything that is an instrumental that you've heard from uh, the 50s up through the 70s is on here. Uh, we've got, uh, well, it, I mean, you, you just pick it off of a list. It's probably on here. Let's just put it that way. But yeah, uh, Santo and Johnny Sleepwalker is one of my favorite uh, instrumentals. And... Uh, <clears throat> There are a couple, a couple that are kind of on the fence that are in here, like uh, Wipeout by the Surfaris. There are some, uh, a couple of lyrics in Wipeout. And uh, Tequila by the Champs, I think it was. Tequila is also on here, but of course it has, it's not a purely an instrumental song. So they, they kind of skirt the definition a little bit, but honestly, this was, especially for the price, $15 for the whole shebang. And I actually picked up just the first three volumes one day, and then I, you know, went back and, uh, looked online and realized that the entire set was just five discs and they still had the other two discs. So I decided, you know, I'm a bit of a complete, completist sometimes, so I, ha I just had to go back and buy the other two, even though they are genre specific. And there's no overlap on them. So, but yes, five amazing discs packed with great rock instrumentals for $15. The discs were in perfect condition. What more could you ask for? And I'm kind of wondering, starting to think that maybe I should have put this higher on my list. But no, these next four, these last four, are uh, really, really good finds. I'm so glad that I picked them up. Number four, I picked up in January, way back in January, uh, off of eBay. And uh, I've never made, a, made it a secret that I don't like Digipacks. And that's one reason I was quick to get rid of this album back in the day. It had only been released ever on a, in a Digipack. And, and this not even the ones with the tray in it. It's just the sleeve kind of a Digipack. Um, and I thought that this was, that was the only, um, form it was ever released in until I saw this on eBay. And I had 
you know, I'd gotten a little bit more into this artist in recent, uh, the last couple of years, and so I was even more ecstatic that I found this. It is John Newman's sophomore album, Revolve. And yes, this was actually a Netherlands uh, issue, uh, but the seller, I believe, was from Russia. So picked it up. It took a while to get to me, but uh, yeah. Finally, I have it in a jewel case, <clears throat> in, a, in real packaging, <laughs> in a jewel case. So, I mean, I, I, I would have been okay with the uh, a tray-based digipack even. But uh, yeah, I just I just don't like sleeve packs. I'm I'm becoming a little more tolerant of them. But uh, you know what what can you say? Um, so yeah, that's that's that one. Uh, and I can't remember how much I paid for it. Uh, I think it was like twelve dollars, and it cost a, about as much to ship it. But you know, to to have it, um, the scarcity of it was one of the reasons why it was worth it to me to have that. Uh, so yeah, that was number four. Now my number three. Uh, purchase of the year is uh, it's another soundtrack again and uh, this was uh, I bought this on eBay back in October so just just recently and I was able to undo one of my biggest musical regrets of all time this year with this uh, purchase uh, and at an unbeatable bargain to boot uh, again kind of like honey I shrunk the kids and inner space um, I stupidly got rid of this CD years ago but had been wanting to reacquire it and for some reason, it was out of print. This was a major movie from a major studio, and the soundtrack was on a major label. So I don't know why in the hell it was out of print, but it was going for over $100. But I found this sleeper lot in like new condition for just $36. The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, it was one of James Horner's last scores. I can only assume that it was because of James Horner's score. Uh, maybe that was one of the reasons why it was uh, so high up in price and, and out of print. Or, well... That would explain why it was so high up in price. But still, why was it out of print? I don't know. But anyway, I was so happy to get this. Yeah, 36 bucks, so a third of what it would normally cost. And yes, I was just so absolutely thrilled beyond reason to have this. So yes, this was the year not just for soundtracks for me, but for finding bargains on used soundtracks uh, that I had been wanting for a while. So there you go. That was number three. My runner-up for my favorite purchase of 2022 was back in March at a vintage stock. Uh, this was on my trip uh, to Oklahoma for Noah and Alyssa's wedding. This was, uh, I believe, the day before I flew home. Uh, I just kind of went to the vintage stock. Uh, Noah and I had been there uh, a few days earlier before the wedding, and this was, obviously, this was sitting in the racks, and I completely missed it. So I am so glad that I went back to the store, because this was another one that I kind of had had on my list for quite a while. Uh, it is Whitney Houston's debut album, the Deluxe Anniversary Edition. It was still sealed in its slipcase, and when it's, you know, the last time I looked, which was a while ago, I'll admit, uh, if you wanted a new sealed version of this in a slipcase on Amazon or eBay, it would probably be going for 30 or 40 bucks. But this was still in, uh, at its retail price, $15.99. Picked it up, still sealed, and uh, I, I'd been wanting this, as I said, for quite a while. And so, yeah, it's got a DVD of uh, music videos and other stuff on it and some remixes and all that stuff. So I actually, when I saw it in the racks, I actually jumped up and down a little bit. I was so happy to see it. Could not believe that I missed it. And my jumping up and down made the camera jump up and down a little bit. Sorry about that. But anyway, yes. Number two on my list for for very, very good reason. And on top of, you know, being an album that I wanted and had been wanting and found unexpectedly, it was tied to my trip back to uh, to see Noah and Alyssa. So, memories. There you go. And then, as for my number one favorite purchase of 2022, this was back in February. I found them on eBay. And this is, uh, again, a two-item list, or a, a, a two-item uh, item on my list. Uh, I guess uh, I had been looking for these sets for a good few years, and since they're both out of print and hard to find for less than $40 used each, um, I wasn't having much luck. Uh, and then I happened upon an eBayer selling both of them still sealed in one lot, along with Kurt Smith's solo CD, for just sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. So it's uh, almost almost half of what I would have paid for them otherwise. So I'm talking about Tears for Fears, uh, The Hurting, and Songs from the Big Chair, the two disc deluxe editions of both. Uh, I had been I, I had a Tears for Fears greatest hits. CD from the Icon series, and you've probably seen them around, uh, for quite a while, but, you know, for a while now I had been wanting the albums, and so, yeah, was able to snatch them up, 
used for a great bargain uh, and with a bonus CD I hadn't even intended to have, which turned out to be pretty good as well. So, yes. So, yeah, this one, <clears throat> for the price and for how much I'd been wanting it and, and the timing, I guess, uh, this one pretty much couldn't be beat uh, in terms of my favorite purchase of 2022. So, yeah, there you go. I This was probably one of my luckiest years for purchasing music <clears throat> in recent memory. Uh, yeah, and the, the ones that I paid a uh, heftier price tag for were, were offset by all the cheap CDs I got. So, all in all, I, I think I've gotten pretty good uh, bang for my buck in terms of CD buying for 2022. I can only hope, uh, hope against hope that 2023 will be just as good, but I seriously doubt it. But anyway, that'll do it for this video. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow for a couple of other small lists of uh, favorite 2022 albums of various sorts as well as a least favorite list, and then capping it off with, uh, two days from now, my 25 favorite studio albums of 2022. Don't miss it. But for now, that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends, and give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos. And be sure and ring that notifications bell, so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob. <laughs>